I will show you what you need to know to replace the parts of your T61. First, let me share with you some of my techniques. I have this habit where after removing a screw or device, I immediately tape the screw near its assigned location. This way, I don't have to remember which screw goes where, especially on this laptop where there are too many different screws. The next technique I want to share with you may seem counterintuitive. I found out it's better to use a flathead screwdriver that fits perfectly snug on one of the cross sections of the Phillips screw head. That's because the flathead screwdriver is sharp enough to dig deeper into the slot and give it more bite compared to the Phillips. So this one is dual Phillips and flat, so no surprise here if I use a flathead. But this one is pure Phillips. And to my surprise, I found out that the flathead has more bite and less slip than the Phillips. But when screwing in, use the Phillips driver initially because it's easier to keep it upright while you're still trying to thread it in, since these screws are too small to hold with your fingers to keep them upright. And do not use magnetic screwdrivers, it could zap the chips on the motherboard. Okay, let's get started. As always, unplug the power and remove the battery. Then, remove the DVD player. Then, remove the hard drive by removing the screw here. Then, remove the cover. Then flip the tape out, then pull it out. Okay, so there's lots of screws here on this bottom base. To add or replace memory, you only need to remove the mousepad board, which is held by four screws. And each screw is marked by rectangular icons, as you can see here. But the ones marked with a water drop icon like this one here is not a screw that's just a drain outlet in case you accidentally spill liquid on this keyboard the four screws are this one this one right here this one and this one after removing the mouse pad board you only need to remove one more screw which is this one right here, to remove the keyboard. After removing the keyboard, you can gain access to the BIOS battery, the Wi-Fi card, and the modem. To remove the keyboard lining, you remove this screw and this screw. You can then remove the display screen and speakers. And by removing the left speaker, you can remove the CPU fan and CPU. You also need to remove this screw and this screw to remove the screen, display screen. So far, we accounted for only 9 screws on this button base. All the other screws on this button base only needs to be removed if you are replacing the motherboard. And if you are replacing the motherboard, you also need to remove this screw and this screw. To remove the mouse pad board, you dislodge the tabs on the sides over here. And then you lift up and you disconnect. To install the memory, you insert push down, insert, push down. Make sure you hear it click. To remove the memory, you spread this and this outward at the same time. And do the same for the one, for the one under. To remove the keyboard, simply lift up and disconnect the cable. The keyboard lining is held down by five screws. One, two, three, four, 
than 5. The screen has 5 connectors. One for the cable connector over here, two above, this one and this one, and two underneath. Over here and here. And write this down. Modem antenna wire. Left gray, middle white, right black. To remove the motherboard, you have to remove the left speaker, the CPU fan, the power connector, the modem, the Wi-Fi, this USB connector, the right speaker, the CPU fan connector, the modem connector, the speaker connector, this and this BIOS battery. Two screws hold each speaker. This, 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 and this. To remove the CPU fan, the left speaker and these two holding brackets need to be removed first. Then you remove these four screws. Then you lift up the bottom part first, then you pull it towards you. Two screws hold the Wi-Fi, this and this. And for the modem, these two screws. Note there's a second modem connector underneath the Wi-Fi card. I want to say it again. After removing a device, I suggest you immediately tape each screw beside its slot so you don't have to remember which screws goes where. This is the BIOS battery. Now remember what I'm about to say. This is very important. Every time you disconnect the BIOS battery, a setting will be reset in the BIOS that causes Windows to blue screen during startup. Or during setup, it will falsely say it cannot find the SCSI disk or something. To fix this, follow the instructions during the startup to go to BIOS settings and then set the SATA setting to com back to compatibility mode. Note the routing of the wires. Let the canals and hooks guide you and replace the scotch tape that hold these wires. The modem wire goes through here, around this screw, down here, over here, then underneath the BIOS battery. The left speaker wire goes through here, and then under here, and there's a scotch tape here. The left speaker wires go through this hook, along this canal, then down here. And there's four scotch tapes. One, two, three, four. And this USB wire goes along this canal, and there's three scotch tapes. One, two, three. And note the BIOS battery wire goes over itself, and is also held down by a scotch tape. Remove the CPU by turning this screw counterclockwise. When putting it back on, make sure the screwdriver slot is parallel to the CPU edge. Sometimes, this screw gets stuck midway and gives a false assumption that it's already fully seated. You have to force it all the way to its locking position. This is a common problem because one would think the CPU is fragile being the brain of the system so you would be afraid to force the screw and ruin the CPU. And also, when putting the CPU back on, use these two triangles as a position guide markers. The motherboard and frame can be detached from its base. There are seven screws that attach the motherboard to the frame. Two for the video connector over here, two for the DVD-ROM connector, one for the CPU, and two for the PCMCIA module.